Hello and welcome back to another reaction. In this occasion, Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2 Episode 17. Yes, we have been having a series of episodes that are nothing that I was expecting. Uh, we have perspectives that I was not waiting, uh, an interesting plot twist that, uh, again, I did not see coming. It has been a very interesting um, uh, perhaps mini arc will be correct way to call it, because again, in the moment they enter Vasingse, which is obviously the capital of the Earth uh, Kingdom, everything is being kind of weird. The moment that we saw this uh, government that is trying to hide the truth from the people of the Earth Kingdom, or especially from the uh, people inside Vasingse, trying to control every aspect of life within these walls, which is obviously something that is sickening. And this is something I have said in previous videos. This is completely weird and utterly, utterly terrifying for me personally. But not only that, not only we saw this political threat in a, what could be considered a kid's cartoon if you only saw it, like, you know, passing by, but we got perspectives that I did not see in any other show. Perspective from animals, and it's not just some weird stuff, and not just some funny stuff and comic relief. No, they actually took the protagonist of this series, and they make that section of episode 15 the comic relief, other obviously than Sokka. But my god, it is amazing how this show is changing my perspective of what you could do with what you are given, the information that you are being given in this, in this show. And obviously we got previous episode that is about Opa. And how the, the way he traveled or the way in which he was kidnapped and his journey, a very painful journey that he has to take. And obviously telling you how he feels without being in your face, without having to have anybody to interpret their emotions. But by showing us the, the mannerisms of Opa, I find that fascinating. I love the fact that this show is capable of doing something as amazing as that. But anyway, I think I am starting to ramble because yes, I find this previous episode fascinating. So let's just cut this presentation before I get way too ahead in my ramblings and watch the video, shall we? Okay, I'm back. I just watched a second time the uh, 17 episode of the second season. Again, I am so happy, so happy because now Opa is reunited with Ang and the rest. My God, it was just a huge journey that I did not expect. Just as I said at the beginning of the episode during the presentation, I was not expecting these from well from this episode. None of the things that happened in the previous I don't know five four episodes that we watch, I expected nothing, nothing that I saw in here. I I, I didn't know I didn't even, I didn't even know what to think when even when you told me oh this is a special episode oh this is going to be about this or that I had no idea what to expect from this episode episodes and it's been a marvelous journey yes obviously we need drama to um, incentivize you to see the episodes it, we need something because obviously if everything is perfect in the episode it's not going to make you feel great it is not one to make you see the next episode perhaps you can uh, put that in the end uh, so you can have you know a relaxing moment after after the grand uh, battle that uh, of an anime or an animation in this case uh, but not in this, and obviously we needed the drama, and my god, the amount of drama that we saw in these past episodes, and the kidnapping of Opa, we obviously got that first shock, uh, and we saw a uh, Ang, a new side of Ang, a very angry Ang, an angry, if you want, uh, 
Then of course we have uh, we have this acceptance. We have everything, and we develop our characters uh, indirectly thanks to this kidnapping. We have our funny moments, yes, but we obviously uh, those episodes help to develop the characters in the point that we are seeing right now. And this is kind of a culmination for some of those characters. This is the culmination of what we have been seeing in the past 10 episodes of the series. This is the culmination, or at least I think it's kind of the culmination, or we're heading towards that culmination for some characters. Before going to a more specific point, because yes, there is a point for this rambling, or for this part of the rambling, let's go uh, with analyze the episode little by little. Obviously, we're going to have first the side of the heroes. Uh, again, this ray of hope that we had at the beginning, uh, with the pamphlets and with everything that we saw, and obviously the ridiculous drawings of, of uh, Sokka, I love them, but yeah, they look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> uh, everything culminated to the point in which they find Opa, or they find clues about Opa. And everything that we have seen, obviously, is kind of going towards this episode. Passing Se, as I said in the, uh, in the presentation, is a very militaristic state, very close, very controlling state. Especially for the upper class. The lower class have these soldiers that go about their lives because they know that they need to control to a certain point these people so they do not riot because of the lack of food or something like that. But the important ones, the ones who have information, have a certain degree of control within the city, now we need to look those guys closely. And this is something that we saw in this episode and in previous ones. In the low parts of the city, in the poverty parts of the city, we have police that just patrol in the place and trying to maintain order. And when somebody is trying to stir up problems, they take him away and they brainwash him. If they don't need it, they're going to leave it there. If they need it, just in the case of this episode, they are going to use them. And they use Jet in a very clever way. They try to de deceive uh, the Avatar so he can get away from the city and they don't cause any more problems within the city. Because yes, according to what they are uh, thinking, they are causing problems within the city just by uh, trying to find the bison. And this has made me suspicious about this guy, about uh, the minister. I don't recall his name. But I'm going to say that in the end. And of course they use jets. Oh yes, they are in an island far away, but yet is trustworthy because he's not lying. And they can sense that. Literally Toph can sense that. And they are going to be away. But the problem is when the the band that is with Jet found him, that's when the problem arrived. Because uh, these military police didn't expect because I don't think they have any idea that these other guys existed. I don't think so. I I I, I think they uh, they assume that Jet was working alone, and so okay, if we got rid of Jet, there is not going to be any more problems. And that is when the magic happens. And again, this show is giving me more reason to believe that obviously the intelligence of Sokka is not the book smart he is intelligent not just the classic cliche that we saw in other animes of intelligence and that is something I like because yes I was right when I knew it anyway um, and obviously thanks to Sokka discovering because he was the first one to point that out that he's been brainwashed and he connected the idea of the main that they had with Jet and their behavior and they discovered that, yes, actually Jed was brainwashed. And they released him for a certain point of this brainwashing. And that's uh, the information that they needed so they can reach to this lake. This lake is important. The lake uh, Lao Gai. It's obviously in the title. When the, the first time, and I don't think I'm going to include my reaction to the title because there is nothing special to that reaction, honestly, in, in this case, because the title didn't tell me anything. It, it was just a lake. It was maybe connected to Opa, but I didn't understood the connection back then. So, yeah, obviously there is not going to be a, re a big reaction to this. And they find, obviously, 
this lake and this is the place in which this police state in this police are trying to brainwash everybody into being in complete control about the city to be in control of Basin Se. I am still not not sure about the reasoning behind that control because I'm getting more and more suspicious with this minister. Okay, they discovered the lake. We have a very uh, interesting uh, way of seeing things. And yes, a ray of hope that we had back then. But obviously the police state and all these police agents discovered them and they tried to capture them or offering something else so they will be left alone. They did not work in the favor of this police state. And in the end, Opa... Opa end up rescuing them, but obviously thanks to the help of somebody else. They rescue Opa, or, or, or Opa rescue them, and they got rid, at least I think momentarily. I don't think this is enough to uh, kill off uh, this minister, uh, this uh, puppet master behind the king. Uh, I don't think it's enough for him to be killed off. But unfortunately, there are consequences that are really permanent for the hero side. In this case, Jet. Jet really changed. Obviously, outside of his hatred towards everything that is Fire Nation, he changed. Unfortunately, by protecting the Avatar, and he was killed. Or at least mortally wounded. Because yes, we don't see the blood, we don't see the gore, but obviously this might be because, yeah, there is a certain connection with kids and they don't want to risk it that much. Even if, obviously, I know, I understand, this is not a kid's show for every topic that we have discussed, but still, there is a certain connection with kids, uh, thanks to the animation and some of the silly jokes that we got here and there. So they didn't want to risk it and show this gruesome scene. But obviously we can understand this as inner bleeding because yeah the rock perhaps did not penetrate the skin but destroy the vital organs of jet and we know that obviously for all the hints around this moment we don't see the dead but we see the faces and especially the declaration of katara that oh this is not this doesn't look good so yeah obviously we saw that is the implication here that jet died Sacrificing himself to save Ang and perhaps uh, Opa. We got our happy ending, yes, but not without any drama behind said happy ending. And this is something I have said before. Obviously, uh, I like the fact that it's not an easy victory for them. Because this took them a lot of effort and a lot of suffering from both sides. Opa and obviously Ang. Now, the other side is again with Uncle Iroh and Prince Zuko. The life was going well for Uncle Iroh. His tea shop, his own tea shop. Uh, he was going to be happier in a higher position. Obviously not as high as he was still in the fire, uh, the fire Nation. If he still was, uh, you know, the new Fire Lord. Because he was destined to do that. But, obviously... Uncle Iro reached a point in which he understood that this power, this uh, the Fire Nation, the, the power behind the Fire Nation or the power behind the Fire Lord is not, an impo not as important as inner peace, which he has found now. Yes, he's still conflicted uh, thanks to his son and his dad and he's still mourning. It's obviously uh, that is something that we have seen, but he has found inner peace. And I think the death of his son is partially uh, the one who provoked this inner peace that he has to look inside of himself so he can find peace after the death of somebody that he loved so much but Prince Zuko and yes I'm calling him Prince Zuko again is a different story he's still struggling to find his side on this place and I mean his own destiny so this is this is an interesting point because we start to see the conflict between Uncle Iroh and uh, Prince Zuko. But it's not a conflict out of hate. It's a conflict out of love because Uncle Iroh wants to protect Zuko, wants to, Zuko to be happy. But Zuko cannot be happy if he doesn't find within himself his own destiny. It doesn't have to be a grand destiny, but his own destiny. And I think this episode is 
incredibly important for Suko to find that way, to find this destiny that he's so desperately looking. Because he is conflicted, there is no other way to say it, he's conflicted. And he needs to be something else. He needs to be something else. But nobody else can tell him what he should be. Only himself. Because if somebody else told him, it's not going to be him. It's going to be the shadow of other person. Or of other people too. So this is important. And this is a step forward to that redemption. Because now he released Opa. Because yeah, the heroes believe that it was actually this minister. But no. It was Uncle Iroh and Suko. They both released Opa. Because that they knew that this is something else. Something important. And obviously in the last scene that we got of both of them coming out of the lake. This is obviously a point, a very... Not as not a subtle way of getting rid of the past in the, in the form of this mask of the blue spirit. This is an important step for redemption. We have uh, we have several steps, but I think this is a very 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 important step for the redemption of uh, Prince Suko. And I cannot wait to see how this turns out in the end. This, this is an eye-opener episode. I think it's a very important one. A lot of action. But I think what we got in the background, in the context, especially for Prince Suko, is extremely important. This episode is extremely important. And a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful episode, especially for an introspective way of seeing Prince Suko. That he needs to change, but the change needs to come from within him. Oh, I love this episode because it gave me so much to speak about. Oh, boy. But I think I exhausted of, uh, of this one. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, let me remind you that if you enjoy the content of the channel, please consider a subscription and turn on notifications so you can get up to date with whatever we're doing with the channel. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment so I know what you think about the reaction, about the video, and about the commentary in general. Again, I tend to not to answer them in, comment in commentaries below them, but I always read them, and I'm so thankful for those, uh, for those comments. Um, what else? Oh, yes, if you want to follow me on Twitter, the, the, Twitter, the link is in the description below, and obviously the Betrude uh, the reaction is still there. So, again, I recommend you to subscribe to, to my Betrude channel, uh, so you know in any case anything happens with, with this one on YouTube, you have... You know where to find me. Uh, but anyway, yes, I think that's it. I have nothing else to say, but thank you for your attention and see you on the next one. Bye. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, give it a like so the algorithm from YouTube will help me out. And check my other videos, share them. And also, why not subscribe to my channel and join this community? And as always, I want to thank you for your attention, your likes, and even your dislikes. Your comments, which is something I always look forward to read. And yeah, once more, thanks and see you on the next one.